Yeah, hello and welcome to our English webinar today. We'd like to talk to eGrouper users from around the world. So there's a special welcome to our friends in Brazil. Hi. Um, perhaps you can give us a short feedback if you can hear us properly. Do you all see our screen now? Ah, oh, there's someone typing. German answer, nice. <laughs> um, so you all have a good connection. Okay. Hi, Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, in case of any technical problems, we'd like to apologize for that, but it's a live webinar, so we do our best. My name is Eva Wertheimer. You perhaps know me from our English tutorials. And I'd like to introduce Birgit Becker, which is probably not necessary <laughs> because she's from our Stylart support team. Hi, Birgit. Hi, Eva, and hi from all over the world. So we have Germany, we have US. I know Francisco and say hello. We have Nathan and we have Luis from Brazil. I don't know where that Tom Plancon is here. Could you tell us where you are from? But at least he can hear us wherever yeah, he definitely. is. <laughs> ah, France. So we also have France. Someone's typing. Oh, no, he stopped. Okay. <laughs> So we'd like to talk about how to work more efficiently with eGroupware's new calendar in version 16.1. Um, we'll show the new calendar that offers better usability and some more functions. We'd like to introduce the new features and the changings in our new calendar. And we'd like to share some tips for a better workflow for your daily use of eGroupware. Now I'd like to change to the next slide so Birgit can talk about the details. Thanks, Eva. Yeah, so we are looking at this time into our calendar more deeper. So this means we'll like to show you how our new um, views are looking. So the regular views like day view, week view, month view, um, but also how our new planner view works how to switch between five and seven days. Um, we like to show you how our toolbar works and how we arranged the different kind of views, how colors are looking, how our context menus are working. Um, for sure, in general, favorites are still there, how to work with favorites, how to work with track and drop, um, showing infolog entries, are uh, using infolog entries, all these things um, will come then more in detail when we share our view to you. Um, in general, we'd like to encourage you to ask any kind of questions in our chat because it's always great to have some feedback from eGroup where users um, to see where more explanation is needed. I'm changing now to Birgit's screen so she can share her view. Thanks, Eva. Yeah, so you now should be able to see my week view, which is at the moment five days showing my calendar from eight to six in the afternoon. Um, these are still settings what we have in eGroupware, which where is your day view and what do you want to see? But what's new is I can just scroll up and scroll down and so being able to see the full day, even if it's not displayed from the very beginning. And this is possible in the most views. So if I'm in switching to the day view by just either clicking on the day in the header or clicking, and that's where I'm introducing our toolbar, on the toolbar icons. So that's the one day, the day view, clicking on it will switch to the day view of today and here I also can scroll inside my day and so getting to appointments which are maybe out of the day range I've been setting in my preferences. And you still can see your infolog entries on the right hand side in a list. There are more views I like to introduce to you. That's our multi-week view and the multi-week view you can also um, have a preference how many weeks you want to see. So now directly visible for me are, let's say one and a half weeks, but I 
set my calendar to be able to see three weeks. So if I'm now having three weeks, I can just scroll within my calendar and all three weeks are visible and scrolling into them. Um, so what has changed in general is we are now able to use better the whole calendar, the whole space. Like before, um, it was a certain amount of space which was available, but you haven't been able to scroll or you may see just half of the place was used. So that has changed. And pretty new is our new months view, which no longer shows the events in uh, with time ranges. It just shows a list of events. Um, you also see the new look and feel of our category colors. So that's one of the main changes I think we did to eGrouper, having there a lighter design, having it more clear and structured look and feel. And if you like that view very much, you can set in your preferences um, to not have it only on the month's view, which is a default. You can also choose it for the um, multi-week view, for example, or also for your week view. I think that makes it much more easy if you have a bigger group of users and want to see how they are working, what they are doing over the day. Um, so the list view gives you a good kind of overview in that monthly view. I just saw that someone's writing. He's sorry for being late. So no worries because we are as usual recording this webinar and you can watch it afterwards. It's on our website or you will be informed via email. Yeah. So additionally, to what I now showed on the left hand side in our toolbar, we have that more option on the right hand side. You know that already from the email module, the toolbar working. So if I like to have a different view, I can just track and drop it into more or out of more into my view. So, um, or I can click it if I'm saying I want to see the planner by user. I'm just clicking on the more planner by user and it shows me my user because that's what I have selected here. But if I select, let's say group product development, for example, I will see the other users which are in the same group or switching to group Santiers calendar which goes up with my month's view. So you're seeing now I'm using favorites, just clicking on a favorite makes me showing a different kind of view. So in the favorites, you can store all kind of things like which view, um, maybe what category, like that holiday planner here. So it shows our whole team, but just the group, uh, the category holidays. Um, which is one of the planner views, what we now have. And within a planner view, you can zoom in or zoom out. So if I like to see what happens on Tuesday, I'm just clicking on Tuesday and get, get a better detailed plan of the Tuesday, clicking back on week. I got the week view and also the option to go back to the month view. So in general, the planner view is is um, a good tool to get a overview of your of your appointments, but not too detailed. Yeah, I think that's a good explanation. Um, also showing here another one, which is a group management planner, which goes for all kind of categories. So I can see here who of our management team has at what days appointments or nothing uh, or is available, something like that. Mm -hmm. But for sure, the details, it's maybe easier looking into a month's view. So it's up to you. You can select whatever you like and just put in your favorites or into your toolbar what you like to use more often. There's a, one new button that shows a five and a seven. So I guess that's for the five and seven days view. Now we also see Saturday and Sunday, but Perhaps you can show us how to 
turn them off so you have more space for the rest yeah it's pretty simple to use you just click on the five or on the seven and if you will change you already see now it has changed while we've been talking i clicked on the five and sunday sunday are gone similar for sure also on the week so if i'm clicking now on the week you see it just shows my calendar from monday to friday so i can pretty simple switch between a view where a weekend is displayed or weekend is not displayed. So if you have a smaller screen, for example, it would make sense to just show Monday to Friday. Yeah. If my weekdays goes from Monday to Friday, it makes sense to show only them. And if I have something which our business, which goes on the weekend, then I can just switch them on. And I also can store them in the favorites. Similar is also valid for our planner. So switching on the planner. Also, I can switch by five, seven between showing the Sundays and Saturdays or hide them. Another thing what I like to show and introduce is one of the elements of our toolbar, which just goes to the next few. So being in a week view, it will show my next week. If I'm on a month view, I'm going to the next, simply goes to the next month. So the next button refers always to the view that you are currently using. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to go back and being on today, I just click on today. and it goes back to my actual date. Uh -huh. So always easy to navigate even without using the site menu at all. So you can navigate through your calendar quite quickly. Also, if you don't use the site menu or you even hide it, perhaps. Yeah, I can also hide it. So just clicking on that icon hides my site menu and I have more space available for my calendar, even where, especially for smaller screens, that's a good option. And if I'm clicking into another application, it remembers if I last used it without or with site menu. So clicking on mail would open it because I have selected it last time that I want to see it with my site menu while a trust book was closed last time. So it shows up closed and similar also for the calendar. Mm -hmm. So for applications where you often use it, you can leave it open and for the rest, you can hide it, for example. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, if are there any questions concerning the plan of view or the favorites or the views in general? If no, we would go on with the context menu, I'd say. Okay. Yeah. So the new context menu or the context menu, what you already know from the other applications or from a list view in calendar, it's now also available on our regular views, which means if I'm clicking here with the right side of my mouse, it shows me my context menu and I can easily have different kind of actions happening. So I can, for example, copy an event. It opens my pop-up dialogue for editing the event, showing the title, having the text included, which was in the event. For sure, it also copies the start and I can just set another date. Um, it puts in the um, appointments of the users which have been in there and so on. So it's pretty easy. I don't need to open the event, send go for action copy. It's now available on a context menu. Similar thing happens if I'm saying I want to book a timesheet entry on my appointment. I'm just selecting the event using context menu saying create a timesheet out of it. And it gives me the option to change maybe the hours what I used. So maybe there was, the event was just three hours, the rest was travel. 
and I can specify if it belongs to a project or something like that and just save it. So it's pretty easy to create timesheet entries out of my schedule of the week. And it would also be possible to answer invitations, for example, via the context menu. Yeah, absolutely. So here I'm invited and I already accepted, but if I can't come, I can reject it or say, oh, no, I'm it's tentative that I'm coming and it directly changed. So I don't have to open it. I, it's really a quick method of accepting mm -hmm. or denying um, invitations. So context menu in general makes it easier to work fast with your appointments. Yeah, absolutely. Next feature would be drag and drop. Yeah, absolutely. So what we can do, for example, is so drag and drop. We still have the similar things like before. I can just make an appointment longer or shorter by dragging and dropping it from the right hand corner. But in general, drag and drop is used to to invite people, for example, for appointments because you can easily just move the appointment to the next person. Yeah, yeah, that's how drag and drop works in one um, direction, making it bigger or moving it to another day. And that's pretty new. What I can do is I can by track and drop just invite someone else. So um, taking that meeting here and dropping it into the calendar of the colleague like Sonia, it will ask me if I want to invite her or move or change it to her, um, which would move me out of the event and her in. I'm just going and saying invite. So you have the option to invite persons or to move appointments to their calendar. So they are responsible for the appointment then. Yeah, absolutely. So we are not changing the owner. We're just changing the participants mm -hmm. in that. Are case. there any questions? Apparently no. So if we don't have any questions concerning the drag and drop or context menu, we'll go on with the pop-ups now. Yeah. So the pop-ups also have a new look and feel. So um, if I'm, for example, showing you one of these appointments here, you'll see directly this is a whole day non-blocking event and we made some more information um, directly visible. So categories, for example, you can simply select by clicking here on them and change it to another category. Um, so we, we said you mostly don't want to use more than one category in a calendar and therefore sh change the look and feel and the display of the categories. If you are, if you do, if you need to have there more than one, you can just click on the plus and then you can select also more than one category. Okay. Um, another thing, what's pretty new is the pre presentation of our tabs. So you see here, you're in the description tab, switching to participants tab. Um, it's pretty simple. And if I'm in a appointment, I have just one dialog to add either users or groups or also someone from the address book. So if I'm, for example, selecting Stylite, it shows me there is someone in the address book, which is called Birgit Becker from Stylite. And so that's just a contact coming from the address book. If I want to invite someone just by an email address because he's not stored as a contact, I can simply write my email address into it. and it gets invited by the email address, similar for meeting rooms, for example. If I'm searching for meeting, it shows me the meeting rooms which are available. I select it and I can just add it. So if you have an appointment and you want to book the meeting room for that time, it's easy to find out if it's occupied or if you can just use it. Yeah, absolutely. So then it shows up in my list here and you see there are some group invitations. There are some users, there are some address book contacts, 
There are email addresses or resources. So it's just one place where you can do everything. That's kind of the way we want to go for the future. Similar is on, if you look on the right hand side here where you select your users in the side menu, here you also could select your meeting room or an addressable contact if you want to display the calendar of the meeting room or of that addressable contact. Yeah. Any questions so far to how our new edit dialogues are working and looking? Maybe some feedback from your side. Um, do you like it or do you have any ideas or any complaints? Is there anything that wasn't clear or you need a more detailed description? Someone's typing right now. Is it a better look and feel for you or can you imagine that it makes working easier? Where can I set a special category? So you can set your category directly here in that area. So either one or more categories by just clicking into that widget, select your category. If you mean creating a new one, that's still depending on if you're an admin or and want to generate that category for everybody or just for you, it depends a bit. So there's something hidden at the moment. So if I'm clicking on that icon, you see there are a few more points in our top menu, which was hidden before. So this is the place where I can create categories. These are my personal categories I can create. So, um, creating here something like private Igit, maybe give it a color. So that's just for me. If I would do something as an admin, I would always go in the site menu on admins, global categories. And these are where our categories have been defined. So the global categories show all these calendar categories, what you have been seeing before. So in general, adding a category depends on the rights that you have. Yeah, for sure. So regular users are still only um, possible to create regular categories or private categories, while um, if you are in an admin, you can create categories which are valid for more than one. So that's that's what, what you wanted to know, Eric? Yeah, okay. Any more questions? Any, anyone that wants to know something about the five and seven day view, the drag and drop or the context menu, perhaps any feedback for the new features. In the last webinar, we also had the, the question about um, printing out of the calendar. Yeah, I can show you how the print works. So the print is much more improved now in 16.1. So if I'm, for example, in my months view, also showing maybe the weekend, including, I can just click on the print button on top. So we now have the full day and depending on landscape or portrait mode, you will see and get that printed. So what you see here is now what you get printed afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. Including so, the category colors. Yeah. If you have switched that on, it's um, displayed. There's a setting in your browser. If you want to print um, all colors, or including the background graphics or something like that, not sure about the English or French or Prezel terms, which are exactly for that preference. But um, if you click on the print, you need to check that here in the advanced settings, there are some settings which enables or disables what's printed. Mm -hmm. So it just depends on your, on your print settings, but not on eQuery itself. Yeah. The group planner may display only. 
three yeah, or four okay. weeks. Um, it depends a bit. If I was coming from my um, multi-week view with three weeks and then going to a planner view, the planner view goes for that three week thing. And you can also save that as favorites, but we don't have anything for a pre food setting or something like that um, to specify it differently. We said there are so many different kind of views. Having all regular views also as planner views doesn't make so much sense, but we store it in your preferences, we store it as favorites. So if you want to work with a three week planner view or in two week planner view and you switch it once from your multi-week view to it, it will be stored. Yeah, there is a preference for the multi-week view. And so if you go to preferences, that's how it works. So checking the calendar preferences, you see there are still the settings for the workday starts. Um, how many users you want to show on a day view or on a week view. Um, the settings, which goes depending on, let's go to the force preferences. Um, there are some um, settings which goes for how many weeks should be in the multi-week view. And there is that setting where that um, showing that list of events, which goes the none means just the multi, the, the months view. And if you want to have in other views, you can select it here. So there are a few settings what you can change and adapt it. And if you stay that favorite story doesn't favorite, it will be able to use it afterwards. Any other questions you have? There's someone writing, when will this be available for users? Yeah, so we make a bit different. So for our hosting customers, like Nathan, who asked that question, um, we can switch you directly. So in hosting, it's directly available. For installation customers, the first release candidate will come at least end of this week or beginning of next week. So um, for installation customers, we always recommend to um, not directly update your production server with it. Um, so just create a new server, install it there, use a backup, install it and test it. It is just a release candidate for the moment. So we like to get your feedback. And if you run into any problems, let us know. And then depending on how long the process takes, that will be the re uh, have an influence on the release date. But in general, we are now using also with a few customers already productive for some weeks. There have been that beta testing phase um, where users could use it in our hosting. And so you are welcome to send us an email as a hosting customer and we switch you at any time. And um, for installation customers, try it out, test it, and then we we'll hopefully get soon to a really a release. Someone's asking if this also works for the Stylite template. Yeah, it will also work for the Stylite template. If there are no more questions, we'll talk about the next webinars. The next one will be about mobile version in 16.1. And afterwards, there will be one about the release in general. Ah, one more question. Can tracker items appear in the calendar? Nope, not yet. <laughs> Haven't worked on that. Haven't got that feature request before. <laughs> so that's a new one. That's a new one, yeah. Just <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's allowed to be curious. <laughs> Okay, so we'll send more information in the EcoBear newsletter and via Facebook and Twitter. And if there are no more questions left, we'll wait a second if anything comes up. And if no, I'd like to thank Birgit for the nice introduction. Yeah, it was nice to be here and um, also nice to get the feedback from our users all over the world. Yeah, we hope it also was informative for you and that you got a short overview about the new things in 16.1 and especially 
the new calendar. Yeah. Um, for more information, just write us at info at stylite.de. Thank you very much. And we hope to see you in our next webinar. Bye bye.